Our next speaker is Kristen Honey. Kristen Honey is a big picture systems thinker. In 2012, she earned dual doctoral degrees from Stanford University in environmental, Environment and Resources, studying integrated fishery, fisheries management, and in a PhD in civil and environmental engineering. She is currently an executive branch fellow at the Department of Energy. She has a passion for teaching about holistic health with a focus on Lyme disease, science, and treatments. She enjoys travel, nature, skiing, and sports, especially anything on or near water. Today, she will be discussing innovations in public-private partnerships and open data policy. Please welcome Kristen Honey. Thank you all for coming. Um, I also must disclose that these are my own opinions, my own journey, not the Department of Energy nor AAAS. Um, I am hosted at Energy Efficiency Renewable Energy, the acronym EERE, office within DOE. There's an EERE Strategic Programs Office of Policy and Analysis. And what I have learned in this fellowship is to follow the bright spots. You don't know what curveballs are going to come at you, but take what works, either what you are great at or what you see working with someone else, and do it again. Replicate it and try it again. And with that success, new opportunities happen. This fellowship will push you outside your bounds of comfort. I went from water to energy to open data. Literally for my PhD, I got to scuba dive, count fish, and call it work. <laughs> now I did that in a framework of complex adaptive systems where we have small marine reserves and there's no fishing allowed. And how do we scale this up from individual fish in a kilometer to a whole coast of fisheries management? And this slide is supposed to show that. The, the local individual scale, context matters. Then you have to integrate across scales, probably with nonlinear dynamics. And so you're going to have the whole bigger than the sum of the parts. And then how do you assemble all these different pieces to make sense of policy recommendations? And I was always into pragmatic solutions. Um, and DOE saw this. And I got to DOE and uh, didn't know anything about energy. And fortunately, they said, oh, great, we're doing water energy nexus, and we need you on water. You know water. So I jumped into the water energy nexus because to move water around takes energy, and to produce energy takes water. And uh, one of our first projects was this water energy nexus report, the first one ever that DOE put out this past year. And they were very interested on challenges and opportunities at local, regional, national scales, similar to the ocean, but this was energy. And I like to think of energy kind of like water management on steroids without storage. It's a hard problem. And then that turned into work on a climate action plan. Climate change was a little familiar to me with the oceans, ocean acidification. It's affecting all parts of our globe. So again, research synthesis sort of in the comfort zone of a fellow. Pretty interesting. Do the job in front of you. Do it with excellence. And before you know it, another opportunity will come knocking. And for me, this came in the form of DOE's second quadrennial technology review. And the entire department and all 17 national labs are looking at the technological future at a 10 to 15 year time horizon. What are the cutting edge game changing technologies out there? What do we need to invest in our d, &D? How can we accelerate what's happening in the private sector to change tomorrow? Then I got a spring curveball that I did not expect, which was really fun. This was where open data came in. The Energy Data Palooza. The White House wanted to co-host an Energy Data Palooza with DOE. And what this Data Palooza is, is getting the public, private partner, public, public sector and private sector together to celebrate all awesome things open data. Over 500 companies and participants who are using open government data available to anyone here for private business models. And we gave out prizes with this energy data challenge that had been going on. Secretary Moniz came, former uh, US Chief Technology Todd Park was there. And we got to promote this new thing, Green Button, which again here is promoted for this American Energy Data Challenge. Green Button is connecting you and your own personal energy use data uh, with the information. There's a similar initiative in the health field where you, as an American citizen, should have access to your own individual records at no extra cost for you. And this is sweeping the land. And all of this effort in open data, energy data, climate data, is feeding into this website, data.gov. And we have this mandate um, that the deadline is soon coming up, November 30th of this year, to categorize all of our non-classified and not personal information on this data.gov, you can think of it as a big white pages for all the agencies 
So soon, American citizens can go there, put in keywords, and they will uniformly search across NOAA, NASA, DOE, every single agency out there. It's a massive phone book. It's a massive project as well. And uh, this executive order, M1313, really brings home the notion that data is a valuable strategic asset. Now, one of my projects to do this for our office at EERE is to transform this open EI, which is uh, open energy information, so openei.gov. And for five years, EERE has been investing in this with NREL, putting data sets online. None of it is compliant with data.gov. So we're managing this massive upgrade and overhaul. And uh, through all these initiatives and various things, I realized there was a gap in our EERE office. And this gap actually extended beyond just EERE to other DOE offices. So with some colleagues, we started up a bi-weekly meeting for open data innovations and how all these different innovative approaches are learning from each other. And with that, we hosted Joel Gurin, and then he came here, and this big affinity group actually, uh, um, he was a keynote speaker and showed what open uh, data can do in government, what big data can do for government. And the AAAS possibilities are so beyond what you, what you could imagine when you start this. It's going to take you in these new directions. And I like to th think of be open to that. And the next thing we have coming up at DOE, we're calling Innovations X. Because all this open data stuff is great, big data, great. There are also amazing prize challenges out there, cash prize challenges, um, business plan competitions that are sponsored at universities around the US. Why don't we talk to each other? And then these big public events can highlight that. Now coming full circle to the oceans, um, I, it's deep in my roots. It was my job before the AAAS Fellowship. I like to think that we can also apply a lot of this technology to uh, international waters and international sustainable, uh, sustainable development needs. And with this Innovations X, thinking outside the box, the power of technology to inform and train people around the world is huge. So with all the affinity groups out there, the creative people uh, in AAAS, we have one called Mad Tech Ed, kind of education technology merging and what's going to come out of that. There's opportunity to create massive on, um, open online courses from static, ugly images like this. And that could get in the hands of thousands of practitioners around the globe. So I put that out there as an idea. I welcome collaboration from anyone who wants to pursue any of the above. And uh, I can't thank this program enough and my fellow fellows, everyone here. Thank you.